Hey guys, this is going to be a quick video on how to adjust valves on a hydraulic cam on a small block Chevrolet. Now, before we get to the video, I want to thank Jeff Grady, one of my subscribers. He sent me this pretty cool shirt. This is for the Heartland Nova reunion. It happens in Rock Island, Illinois. Um, they have that show, so if you're, uh, I think they had to cancel it last year, but because half of last year was canceled. Anyway, um, looks like a pretty cool show. I wish I could make it up there, and maybe I can. But uh, I'm going to be wearing this awesome shirt in some of my videos. So, Jeff, I really appreciate it. Let's learn how to adjust some valves. Okay, so if you've just built an engine or you're just doing a camshaft swap or whatever reason you need to adjust your valves, uh, this is going to help you out. Now, each manufacturer has a slightly different way to do it, but for the most part, they're all the same. Now, the this engine has press-in studs, stock-style press-in studs. It does not have the machined um, boss for the screw-in studs, um, which I should have had done when I had the heads done, but I knew I wasn't going to keep these heads on this 307. And I'm gonna, I've got a whole video I'm working on about the build of this 307. Uh, you guys are going to like that. Anyway, since I've got regular studs on here and not screw-in studs, I couldn't use a full roller rocker. Uh, I didn't think about that until I went to put the full roller rockers on and some of them hit. So wasn't going to happen. So I ordered these comp roller tip rockers. They still have a ball pivot in them and a regular lock nut. Uh, much more simplistic than a, than a poly lock. But, you know, the drawback is it's a little bit more friction right here at the ball pivot. But, you know, they last for hundreds of thousand miles on stock cars. They'll probably be fine in this engine. Now, these are comp cams, 1.52 roller tip rockers. Uh, if you're going to put some rockers on your car and you have stock heads, you don't have uh, screw-in studs on there, this is a good set to use. You know they're going to work. They're going to fit. They're not going to worry about having a clear. You're not going to have to worry about them clearing the boss for the stud. Um, I'll put a link in the description to these uh, rocker arms. They're they're a little bit pricey, but they're comp. They're 1.52, and they're a high-quality piece, much sturdier than your stock stamp rocker. Now, let's adjust some valves. Okay, so there are lots of different styles and methods how people want to have the camshaft turned when they adjust the valves. I'm going by the comp instructions. Um, this is usually about the way I do it anyway, so it's not, not too far of a different thing. It's a very safe way. Like I said, there's some alternate ways to do it, um, and there's nothing wrong with those. But if, if you're new at this, then you want to follow the instructions until you know a little bit more about it, and you can adjust it confidently some other method. Now... What the instructions say to do is to start with number one cylinder and you want to turn the engine over until the exhaust valve just starts to move. As soon as the exhaust valve just starts to move, well, the exhaust lifter, because that's the exhaust valve actuator. So as soon as the exhaust lifter starts to move, adjust the intake. Now what you want to do, uh, okay, well I had it right there where the exhaust valve just started to move. So now we're going to adjust the intake. You've got your push rod in here and it moves up and down. You've got some clearance there. What you want to do is you want to tighten your nut on your rocker arm until you get all the clearance out of there. Now one thing you'll see a lot of people do, and this is a mistake in my opinion, and I've seen some pros do this, and I don't doubt that they're setting it right, but if they're explaining it to you, they're, they're leaving one step out that, that could be crucial in you getting this right. Um, when you check your clearance, a lot, a lot of guys will leave the ratchet sitting right here. Well, if you do that and you're not paying attention or you don't know what you're, you know, you, you don't, you're not aware it can happen, the socket will push down on the rocker arm and it'll change the amount of play that you have. It's real easy for that socket to go in there and push down on it and you think you've got zero lash when you don't. So what I'll do is I'll turn it a little bit, take the socket out, and I'll check my lash. Turn it a little bit, take the socket out, and I'll check my lash. And like I said, it's because you can get in here and you can push on it, and I've got zero lash right there because I've got the socket pushed on the rocker arm. And now I've got movable, you know, it's movable. So you just, just make sure when you're checking that your push rod is actually moving up and down still, you've got the socket off of the nut. It's not a big deal. Turn it a little bit. All right, I'm still getting a little bit of play up and down. All right, and right there it stopped. And I mean, it was probably a twelfth of a turn or so. It wasn't very much at all. And the rocker arm will still move side to side. It just won't move up or down at all. And you've got a plunger in the lifter right there that should be barely moving. If you can see that well, I can't because I'm getting old, 
But if you can see that well, if you've got a light pointed in there, you can actually see the plunger start to move down a little bit when you tighten this up. Um, and then you can check it. But you always need to check to make sure that you've got zero lash. And see, I can still spin this push rod. Some guys will tell you that until this push rod stops spinning, that's a terrible idea. I've got it at zero lash. And now what I want to do is adjust it for the preload. On a 3 8 24 thread stud like this is, every whole turn of the nut is going to move down 42 thousandths approximately, 42 thousandths of an inch. Um, comp cams will tell you in their instructions or on their website that the ideal preload for the hydraulic lifters is 30 thousandths plus or minus 10 thousandths. So that's a pretty big range, 20 thousandths to 40 thousandths is the range. If you want to be right in the middle, well, if a whole turn is 42 thousandths, then half a turn is going to be 21 thousandths. So I'm going to go half a turn and go a tad bit more because I don't want to be at the bottom of my range. I'd rather be in the middle of the range. So even though the instructions do tell you to turn it half a turn, they're probably assuming that most people are going to set, when they actually get the push rod to stop, they're going to get just a little bit past zero lash and they'll already have a few thousandths of have the push rod down a few thousandths. So I'm assuming that's why they tell you half a turn when half a turn is going to be at the bottom of the range that they suggest. So I'm going to go half a turn on this, just like that, and then a half, uh, maybe a eighth of a turn more, and that one's done. It's adjusted. Okay, and the next step is to turn it over. Turn the engine over until the intake lifter now comes up and is almost all the way back down. So I'm going to wait for my intake lifter to start to come up and there it goes. And when it starts to come back almost all the way back down right there, it's not all the way down but it's close. Now I'm going to adjust my exhaust rocker arm and I'm going to use pretty much the same thing. I'm going to tighten that up a little bit. Wow, I got it close on that one. Okay. All right. And I'm, I'm grabbing the push rod lightly and I'm pushing up and down. And you want to make sure that you're not pushing the plunger in because if you grab it hard enough and push down, you can still push it down some, you know, if, if it's all the way at the bottom because it's a hydro lifter and they're not pumped up. So, all right, now I've got it to zero. I'm going to turn it half a turn and then plus a little bit. And we should be, I don't know, 25 to 28 thousandths. That little bit is an eighth of a turn. I probably could do the math, but I'm not going to. All right, so now you've got that done and you go from cylinder to cylinder doing it the same way. There's a couple of different orders you can do the cylinder in. You can do it in the firing order. You start with number one, then go to number eight, then go to number four, then go to number three, um, you know, it's one, eight, four, three, six, five, seven, and two is your firing order on a small block Chevrolet, unless you've had a, a four, seven cam swap or something like that. But you can go through the firing order that way, or you can go down each bank. Um, you're going to be spinning the engine over a lot. If it's a new engine, make sure you got a little bit of oil in your cylinders because you're going to be spinning it a bunch to set the valves. All right, guys. So that's a quick video on how to set the valve lash on a hydraulic cam on your small block Chevrolet. Now, solid lifters a little bit different, roller cams are a little bit different, at least solid roller cams are. Now, this is a 307, it's got a pretty big camshaft in it. Um, there's a couple of different ways on a stock camshaft, you can set your balancer twice and adjust all the valves. And I've done it that way on performance camshafts before, but once you start getting up in duration, um, that's, that's a little bit tricky to do and get it right. But anyway, what I showed you is pretty much the easiest way and it's also the way the cam manufacturer recommends. So there you have it. Um, Jeff, this is a going out to dinner shirt, man. I'm afraid to get it dirty in the shop, but uh, I really like it. Appreciate it. Thank you guys, and uh, we'll see you next video.